Ahmed didn't want to stay home and be taken care of by the maids. Yes, indeed. He wanted to travel to the South, find black dudes who wanted to get paid. Yes, indeed. Let them play the blues, let them sing some soul, sign some white dudes from London up and play some rock and roll. Yes, indeed. He wanted to be the dude they call Ahmed. He's the blackest mother that I ever met. Yes, indeed. Darling, I love you. You know that you lie. Darling, I love in the background. You know that you lie, boss, you lie. Charlotte, when you were in art school, it must have been challenging to get through the agony of influences and to find your own narrative, your own voice. Yes, because you want to have a voice. You know, you want to have an identity, you want to stand out, you want to be an artist, but it's... As a woman painting still life, perhaps trying to paint things which were patterned, you just weren't considered serious. You're, you're sort of being swamped by these influences. You see Matisse, Robert Mother, Picasso, Picasso, William de Kooning, Japanese Scalia, Chagall. When you see these works, they're so powerful. It's, it's also sort of overwhelming. I knew I wanted to paint, but I didn't know what I wanted to paint. Good evening. We're standing on a rooftop just near Marybone Road and Harley Street. The weather is warm and moist. This is a city that I know and love. From the rooftops of London during the Blitz to the floodwaters of the Missouri River to the war in Korea, Edward R. Murrow set the standard for courageous reporting. William Paley called him the conscience of CBS. But as the country entered the McCarthy era, Murrow's conscience would get him into trouble. And his courage would be tested. My question is, how much disruption are they capable of doing? Who says hard times, I'm used to them. The feeding planet burns. A radical black South African group is threatening violence to bring the curtain down early on singer Paul Simon's South African tour. The Azanian youth organization wants sanctions against South Africa to remain in place. For tears. I don't really think there's any danger. But once we get in the stadium, I really have no idea. I would rather die on stage singing than to die doing something that I don't believe in. There was a bright light, a shattering of shop windows. The bomb and the baby carriage was wired to the radio. These are the days of miracles. Tonight, American Masters goes behind the scenes with the man who created the most successful news program on television and forever changed the face of broadcast journalism. Don Hewitt executive producer of 60 Minutes. I gotta get a show in the air. Tonight, for the first time in 30 years, we go where no outside reporters have been. 1338 minus 41. You don't have the time to do it. I don't know what he's doing. Inside the offices, corridors, and screening rooms of 60 Minutes to show you what makes it tick. Let's go look at this. Well, I'm telling you, Don's gonna look at this. He's gonna just sit there, he's gonna just sit there and go, okay, I get it. These stories and more, tonight on American Masters.
kid at school, that's all I wanted to be, really, was Bob Dylan. I had my coat hanger and my little harmonica holder and guitar when I was 14. You know, like all the other guys. And the first thing I played was old folk songs, Green Sleeves. I walked down there and ended up in one of them coffee houses on the block. I'd get on the stage, sing and play, man, I say, come back some other day. You sound like a hillbilly. And now you're, you're doing a record for Columbia. Yeah, it's coming out in March. And what's it going to be called? Uh, Bob Dylan, I think. Of the nearly 200 people caught in the avalanche, 70 were dead. Out of respect for those who died, the Stampeders voted to close the pass for a week. And there's no other photograph that so instantly sums up what it was all about. Man straining upwards, that's the point. Climbing higher, bent over but still moving. This is the human spirit. We can't resist the next corner. We have to go around it. When this record came out, it was at a particular time in American history. The civil rights movement was really exploding all over the country. And the lyrics in that song represented a whole other level. You don't know me. To me, it was black America with this music saying, you think you know me, you think I'm just this happy guy singing my songs and, and nodding my head and doing all my moves. You think you know me, but you don't know me. You sing about the woman, but you're really also talking about all the uh, kicking around that you, you've had, the amount of humiliation that you've known, and, and uh, all the put-downs that you've had, the throwing out doors that you've had, the hunger that you've had. No, baby, let me say, yeah, you don't know me. Rock and roll is here to stay. 